Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Joni Young if you're new here and today I'm going to show you how to paint this fantasy floating world. Now I've been known to paint a lot of floating worlds and fantasy paintings but this one's going to be a little bit unique. So if you're interested in learning how to paint this today or just curious and want to watch, hit subscribe and give this video a like. I'm going to go over the canvas I'm using today. This is an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. You can also use a smaller canvas or a larger one if you like. I'm going to be using my number 30 filbert brush to start. I'm going to wet the canvas down just a little bit with some water first. That way when I come in with my paint it's going to blend and spread across the canvas so much easier. That's going to save you a lot of trouble um, when you're just beginning how to paint, learning how to paint, a lot of you aren't really sure about how to blend your acrylics. Well, that is just a really quick and easy, simple little tip or artist hack. So just again, a little bit of water on your canvas will help the acrylic spread and go a long, long way. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the colors I'm using today and then I'll have a list below the video as well for you if you wanna check that out, but you can also use any other colors that you want. You don't have to use the specific ones I'm using today, uh, such as my neon colors. So I'm gonna just get right into those. I've got lemon neon yellow or a cool yellow, neon pink, neon rose, neon yellow warm. Those are by Holbein. They're heavy bodied acrylics. I've got a little bit of neon red off to the side here. I just finished up another painting. Um, I may or may not use that. Um, bright aqua green turquoise, light olive green, burnt sienna, bit of Mars black, titanium white, and phthalo blue. Okay, so to start this painting, like I mentioned, a little bit of water on the canvas. A little bit goes a long way, so don't uh, water down your canvas too much. Otherwise, this, the paint's just going to drip right off and you're going to thin um, the saturation. You're not going to have uh, too much color on your canvas that so just really waters down the saturation if you use too much water. There's also um, acrylic mediums out there that will help lengthen the drying time and your acrylic paints so you can check those out too if you want. I just find water works for me and it's free. <laughs> okay so the first color I'm going to come in with is my neon yellow. So I'll just pull right into this neon yellow here. I'm using heavy bodied acrylics. They're really, really thick and they've been kind of sitting out here on my palette for a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of white. Okay, so right here in the center is where I wanna start coming in. I'm just kind of crisscrossing around here, sort of thinking of like an oval type of a shape. Doesn't really matter. That's what it's gonna end up being though, right in here. And then I'm gonna just soften it with a little bit more of my white. I like to use titanium white. It's a nice, bright, cool white, and it makes the most beautiful shades of pastel colors. Okay, so the next color I'm gonna be using without washing my brush is my turquoise. So I'm gonna start outside of the yellow. I like to work in sort of a crisscross like this. That's how I find it helps me to blend and soften my acrylics. And then I'm gonna start gently working a little bit of that into the yellow. Kind of like this uh, technique for my skies, especially this crisscross, because it kind of starts to make it look like clouds, doesn't it? Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit more of the turquoise and I'm gonna go over the corners. And the sides. You don't have to paint as quickly as I do. I've always been a fast painter. You can take your time. Don't ever feel like you have to be a fast painter. We all paint at our own pace. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Just as long as you're trying to learn how to paint and putting in the time and effort and remembering to enjoy the process along the way. Sometimes we forget why we're painting in the first place and we're left feeling frustrated. If ever you start feeling like that, set your brush down, take a deep breath and kind of just regroup and then start over again. Okay. The next color haven't washed my brush out yet i'm going right into my phthalo blue almost went into that black i'm glad i didn't do that <laughs> okay so the blue i'm going to come around all the edges here we're creating a beautiful vignette so dark to light 
and then soften with that crisscross. Come along the bottom here and just continue along. Same technique. Now this will work wet on wet like I'm doing here or apply it over dry paint as well. If your turquoise has dried, that's okay. You can still, it'll work both ways. I'm going to add a little bit more. Making the edges just slightly darker. Okay, now I'm going to wash my brush out and I'll come in with the next step. For the next step, I'm going to be using a number 10 filbert brush. What I want to do is create a few little waterfalls in the background and a few peaks to my clouds and give them more of a layered look and catch some highlights on them. So I'm going to be using a little, taking a little bit of water and using my white. And oh, let's take a little bit of that cool yellow. Just mix up a little bit and then have it mainly on the tip of your brush, the end of your brush. And we can just start creating these little half circles and a little bit more water on my brush, a little bit more paint and water. What I like to do is have them smaller towards the center of the canvas and then making them bigger and layering over like this. That gives you more a sense of um, perspective. Now, because my color, my paint, my blue, my turquoise colors on canvas are still a little bit wet, I'm picking up a little bit of that here and there. I like that. I often mention that. It's kind of nice to pick up those other colors. A little bit more white here that kind of picked up some blue and it looks kind of pretty though so it's unintentional little happy accidents little mistakes that sometimes turn out to be the nicest parts of our paintings and that's what i love about not ever planning a painting out too too much because i'll never discover those if i do got to paint outside of the Color outside of the line sometimes, right? Okay, a little bit more. All right, so I'm gonna come in and add some waterfalls here now. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of white here, maybe just a tiny bit of that turquoise. Tint my white a little bit. And then we can just, on an angle, pull and drop like this. I'm going to need a little bit more white. And uh, just a few layers of waterfalls, tiers of waterfalls coming down here. be kind of cool to have a mountain here so I'm just gonna kind of looks like an M on the side like that just with a bit of white like that and maybe another one kind of up here now with a darker color we could take our blue we're gonna come on the other side and gently, wherever we have those bright, bright highlights, 
we're going to add a shadow to the other side. Rinse my brush out. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to this one. Just make it a little bit softer. And then just scumble off a little bit of the excess paint there. I'm going to take a little bit more white. Come back. Oh, need a little bit more, a little bit thicker. So because it starts to fade as it dries, especially if you've got a little bit of water mixed with it. If you don't want that to happen, just use straight paint. And we'll just add some water, some more waterfalls in here. Get more white. And you know, you can always tint your white with another color if you want. Okay, so it's time to start painting our floating world. And I'm going to add the little world right about here with a clean brush, same filbert brush. I'll mention it again, it's a number 10 filbert brush. Anything smaller, a little bit larger will work as well. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of black. And I'm going to add it right about here. We're just going to go ahead and create this very thin oval. Just continuously go around and around and around to get that shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to add another one right here. And another one right here. So we've got kind of like three, okay? I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. I'm going to take a bit more black, burnt sienna. And what I'm going to do is start coming down on the side. So you can hold your brush on the side like this, placing your finger here if you want. This is just the earth exposed underneath. Now to create depth and make it look 3D, we're going to have some areas really dark and more in shadow. Doesn't matter, you can choose any spot or, or spots you want for that. You want it to hang down the lowest here in the center. And then you want it to be a little bit lighter in some areas. So. You could even add a little bit of white to your burnt sienna if you want. And I'm going to add black right underneath. I'm going to add a little bit here as well. Have it look kind of like it's layered and then it comes down into this one. See, I'm just picking it up just on the side like this. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush off. dry it off and then I'm going to add some light olive green and then I'll add some down here as well.
I'm going to kind of just wiggle, get it on the tip of my brush, and then I'll have kind of a little bit, a few little lines here, give it the illusion that there's some vines trailing down. And you can use any green that you want. The next step, clean brush, a little bit of burnt sienna and black again. You don't necessarily have to blend them up to make one color. It's kind of nice to have um, a little bit of each color kind of come out here and there. And then we're going to come around, follow this shape like a C, and then curve it down and exaggerate down here at the bottom. So again, skinny, a little bit wider, and the widest at the bottom. So I'm going to bring it out this way, have those vines and tree roots coming over the edge. Get a little bit of water on my brush, help fill this in. Have another tree root in here. And then you can thicken it up a little bit if you want. Gonna add a little bit of light olive green. Tap, tap, tap. A little bit more. A little bit down here on the side. I'm going to take a little bit of white, mix that in with everything on my brush. A little bit of olive green is still in there, a little bit of burnt sienna and black. And I'm just going to pull and twist over a little bit more white, make that show up a bit better. I love twisty looking trees. And a little bit of black and you can add a little bit more depth in here in between and do the opposite come from the other side of the black all these little highlights and shadows and mid-tones all the steps that we're doing today are going to help make your paintings 3d and stop them from looking flat. And a little bit more black right in here. To a smaller brush now I'm going to use one of my lighter brushes for some branches and this one is uh, I cannot see the size on there I'm sure it's a number two and you can use you know any size liner brush or round brush that you feel comfortable with you want to just make sure you have some water on your brush and you're taking a black and burnt sienna again Rolling and twisting your brush so you have it on the tip of your brush. So this is just the direction I want my branches going in, but you can add yours any way that you want. Really make it your own, you know? Remember to go back for 
equal water and paint or sometimes even for these like really little branches that are on the end you might just need a little bit of water and you still have because you still have all that paint in your brush okay so i'm ready to apply the foliage the brush i'm going to be using is a mop brush so i've got a one inch oval mop brush and i'm going to be using a little bit of tapping into a little bit of my light olive green and a little bit of black i want to tap to load my brush so that i keep the shape that i want to create these puffy looking treetops so I'm going to start right here, partially going over the sky and partially going over those branches. Make it a little fuller looking. apply a little bit of white now tap in to my light olive green and we're going to go ahead and add a highlight now so I'm just going to tap lightly over part of the treetops so that we don't lose all that shadow we need both light and shadow can pull gently for a little bit of vines or moss hanging though I think it looks kind of nice just like that okay I'm gonna rinse that brush out and I'm gonna start coming in with the next uh, stage of this painting I'm gonna choose a flat brush So the flat brush I'm using is a number six. Just you want something small enough that you can have some control over this small little house and details we're gonna be adding. So I'm gonna add burnt sienna first. I'm gonna just take a little bit of white in with it. And I'm gonna add it right here. It's gonna start doing a little peaked roof, a little slant there little slant that goes down slightly lower pull across fill it in add a triangle right here and bring the roof up a little bit taller paint this in take some black and go across the side of the house add a shadow in there a little bit more black we'll have a little chimney here just a little line and then a little shadow on the roof I'm going to take a little bit more black, outline this again, and pull some lines. Now, it's easy for me to do that when my brush is separating like this. Can you see how it's kind of split apart? It makes it a lot, a lot easier. I like it when that happens. Now, if yours doesn't, don't worry. You just have to take a little bit more time. I'm 
I thought it'd be kind of fun to add, just pick up a little bit of uh, green here and maybe add some moss on the roof as well. Just a little bit more. Have it coming down a little bit lower. And right up to the peak. Maybe just a little hint of it on the other side too. And add a few little bushes here. A little bit more light olive green. Kind of flatten that out there. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white. I've got a little bit of this warm yellow that I'm going to use as well with my burnt sienna. I'm just going to catch the edge here. Pull in a little bit more light. And down in the front here as well. It's time to add some windows and a door. So we're going to add everything really small because this is far away. I'm going to be using my number two uh, little liner brush here, a little bit of white and warm yellow. I'm going to add a little dab there, a little window here, and one here for the door. And then one, two, three windows off to the side. Just going to add a a little bit here on top of the chimney. Rinsing my brush out, I'm going to go right into my black. I'm just going to outline these details, the door, the window. Now, if you want it to look like a little log cabin, you can just do dab, dab, dab on the corners, the sides of your house. Go right under this roof line and just cut right below there. Have some shadows in here and some pretty little flowers. I'm just going to use a small stipple brush. You can use any small brush you want. It's how you use it. It's going to create that um, texture that you want for a bush or flower bush. And I'm going to add, uh, let's see, I think I'll take some of my neon rose. Now my paint's super thick. I'm already using heavy body thick paints, but it's been drying a little bit. So it's, a, it's quite thick. That's why if you guys are wondering what's, what kind of paint does she have? And I'm just going to add some flowers in here, uh, maybe have them kind of go off to the side there, maybe bring some pretty waterfalls in here. None of this has to make sense. This is fantasy. So if you're watching and wondering, well, where are those waterfalls coming from? Why is this here? Why is that there? This is made up. I just love to make up pretty worlds that don't make sense, that are just kind of leave you <laughs> kind of questioning and wondering and daydreaming a bit. So we'll start tapping right in here. Just little taps. Like that, and then maybe a little bit right in here, kind of spilling over the edge. A 
and a little bit in the tree. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of neon pink, just a tiny bit here. And I'll just start adding some. Now see where I'm applying it? Partially on the rose and that looks purple and partially on the pale yellow background. Into just a little bit of white. Tap and dab. Add little hints of highlights here. A little bit coming down, kind of hanging down like that, and then a little bit of white, tap, tap, tap. There's some highlights in here as well. Okay, then I'm going to take What's left in my brush? I'm going to add some little circles here that will add some stars to. I'll take a little bit of white, pink, and rose. Kind of just add that inside. You can twist or you can go in little circles. can have smaller ones. Now I'm going to go and take one of my smallest liner brushes and add those twinkling little stars. So I've got some mini short little liner brushes. This one's Royal and Lane Nickel and it's one of the smallest you can get. What I want to do is just take a little bit of white and I'm going to add a little dot inside each one of these. I'm going to make sure that I twist and roll my brush like this and have just the end nice and pointy. Then I'm just going to gently pull and flick up and down and to the side. They don't all have to be straight up and down. You can have some of your stars kind of on the side. You know, if you happen to take off too much of that little dot, don't worry, we're going to re-dot those after. This is just what we're using to go by. That little dot helps us kind of just line up where we need to place a brush and pull those little sparkles from. Okay, so again, back over with a little, this time I'm going to push a little bit more so I can leave a brighter light inside. You don't have to make all your stars twinkling and sparkling like this. I like to have a few that are just little dots and I like to place my finger here. This really helps you guys give you control. And this one I just want to add a little bit more. A 
I'm gonna take a little bit of my phthalo blue, mix it over here with my neon rose. Take just a tiny bit of white. And I'm gonna start to go over part of that neon rose that we had earlier. Tap, 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 tap. Pick up a little bit more white now. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button if you guys are enjoying this video. Leave a comment or question below. I love hearing from you. Just mixing this up, getting a little bit on the tip of my brush. Tap, tap, tap. Have some flowers coming down here. Love that little bit of purple. Okay, who's ready for some waterfalls? I know I am. I'm going to use another flat brush. This one is my, I want to say, yeah, it's a number 10. And I'm going to get it a little bit wet. Um, I want to add a little bit of blue and turquoise first, right in kind of this area here. I might have to go over the part of these flowers and then another bit right in here. So two little pools for our waterfalls to go into. Then I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush and I'm going to start the first layer. So I'm just going to drop, pull and drop down like this. And then pull up a little bit more in here where these waterfalls are coming into there. And let a third pull right in there. I'll wash my brush out, dry it off, take some white with a little bit of turquoise. And I'm going to come down here. You really want that paint to be on the tip of your brush. Drop. Add a little bit in the center off the edge here and pull and drop. Load that brush up again. That's where I'm going to have the rest coming from there. Rinse all the paint out of my brush and go into just straight white now. Add that a little bit spilling over this edge. It's fantasy, remember, anything goes. I've been painting little worlds like this for so long. I used to sit at the farmer's markets and paint live for people. They would all just kind of come around and i get lost in painting and wouldn't even realize until I heard somebody say something and then I would kind of jump and turn around and I had an audience behind me just watching and waiting to see what I was going to add next. These are what I really enjoy painting the most out of everything. Okay. I'm going to use the corner of my brush, take a little dab of that neon pink, I'm just going to dab in here for a little bit more of a punch of color. Yeah, we can't forget this end. This one's over here. I'm 
think it would be nice to have maybe a moon just twisting around with a little bit of water and white paint I'm gonna wipe the excess off on my towel then I'm gonna come around and just take off a little bit of that paint here and there inside the moon so kind of gives that illusion of the craters on the moon and then I'll take a little bit more white and add some highlights and I'm going to switch over to my filbert brush that'll help me it's got the, it'll help me with the shape of this because it's got the round end. And if you're curious, this one is a number four. And I'm sorry, I don't have a link for these filbert brushes because I got them a few years ago from um, Amazon and I can no longer find them. Isn't that just the worst when you find something you really like and then it's discontinued? Kind of makes you wish that you had bought, purchased multiple ones. Okay, so just a moon there. And then I'll just add a few little dots and dabs for some more stars around there over to a round brush and then just tap 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 with my finger to soften they don't all have to be twinkling I like these ones twinkling down here but you don't necessarily have to have all of them and a little bit right hitting the flowers here A little bit more white to my mountain. This one got a little covered up. Okay. And I have a couple more things to do before I finish this painting. Uh, one being taking a little bit more, if I can get a little bit more of my cool, cool yellow. It's a little bit of water on my brush. I'm going to layer over. I want to I want my grass to feel a little bit more on the green side, like cool, a cool green. And then add a little highlight, a little bit of white in with that lemon. Okay, all these little things make a difference. I'm going to add another layer of moss on my roof. Make that stand out a little bit more. And we probably could add a little stair or two in here, just with a bit of black and brown or burnt sienna. I could add a few stairs just like that. And then a highlight, a little bit of white with my burnt sienna. It's fine like that. One last highlight to my waterfalls. A bit more white and right across the top. The tops of them or where they need to really show up. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue, white, and a tiny bit of turquoise.
just oh, trickles of water right in there. Right in here, actually, what I need to do is pick up, I need to create a, a few little bushes for height here. A little bit of black and green. A little bit of green. Tap, tap, tap. And then, uh, maybe a little bit of both purple and pink. I'll just add a few little dabs. For some flowers, a little bit of white. See, it's how you use the brush. It's not always the brush you're using that matters. So don't ever let not having the same brushes as me stop you or prevent you from painting. You can all paint with me. Okay, well, I'm going to call this painting all done. It was so much fun. Glad I got to share it with you. Thank you all for joining me today and watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more. I'll see you all soon in another video. Bye!